There are a lot of ways of saying if A then B. We can even say it without using the words if or then. Here's an example. Jennifer won't go to the party unless Lauren goes too. The word unless is acting like a conditional operator in this sentence. If you're asked to rewrite it as a standard conditional, you would probably translate it like this. If Lauren doesn't go to the party, then Jennifer won't go to the party. And this is exactly right. We've done two things here. First, we recognize that the antecedent of the conditional is what comes immediately after the unless. And second, we recognize that we need to take the contradictory of this claim to get the meaning of the conditional right. Here it is in a way that highlights these two moves. You look for the unless, you take what immediately follows, negate it, and make that the antecedent of the conditional. And this gives us the form of the general rule. If you say that B is true unless A is true, then you're saying that if A is false, then B is true. Once again, don't be too fixated on which letters we're using to represent the antecedent and the consequent. For some, it may be helpful to think in terms of general placeholders like this. For me, I like simple translation rules that are easy to remember. So I usually say to myself, read unless as if not. This is probably the easiest way to remember this rule. Here's a final example that puts a small spin on things. The claim is, unless you pay us $1 million, you'll never see your pet goldfish again. Here, the unless is at the beginning of the sentence rather than in the middle. But the rule still applies. You should read unless as if not. So the translation is, if you don't pay us $1 million, then you'll never see your pet goldfish again. It doesn't matter where the unless shows up in the sentence, the translation rule still applies.